one great master, he was totally, you can say, illiterate, and uh, he lived in 19th century. He was a this, he was a master of Vivekanand who visited uh, United States. So he used small parables to to help us to know what exactly how to approach to the real self in day to day life. I just remember. So that master. Uh, people ask him how to live in this world day to day. We have a lot of challenges, problems. and So he said, do all your duties, but keep your mind on the real self. He said, live with all. Uh, wife, children, father, mother, perform your duty. Treat them as if they were very dear to you. But know in the heart of your heart that the dearest is the real self. So he was asked to explain further. He said, don't you see the, <clears throat> you know, the maid that comes into your house, performs all the household duties, but her thought is fixed on her own home on her own children. Look at this. Look at the masses. So she brings up, you know, that maid brings up her master's children as if, as if they are their own. But her mind is kept on holding on to the real self. He gave another example, the turtle moves in the water, but can you guess where her thoughts are? There on the, there where her eggs are lying. So the turtle, awareness is already always on her eggs. So that is what the master, do all your duty in the world, but keep your mind on the real self. Done. You need not to listen to any principle. It is done. <laughs> the mind is always there. Oh, but which mind is always there? <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> if the mind is not pure, <laughs> mind is not pure, then uh, the mind goes everywhere. You see that? Huh? Here comes Sunita after a long time, maybe after 15 years, so very good. Uh, so, uh, she works, works for, I think, uh, All India Radio, a public radio station in India. So you see that that is how this master, every master has their own approach. So, uh, in this Eastern wisdom, we always give an example of a snake and the rope. Snake is superimposed on the rope, helps us to know what happens in ignorance. That needs to be understood. So that snake does not exist. When you are walking late in the evening, it is a rope, but my mind has projected snake into it. I am real self, but my mind projected that I am Girish, you, you are Vabhav, you are David and Jerry. There is only one real self. That needs to be understood, and that is the journey of this uh, master. So he never talks that your mind should be pure, but he has already in the first chapter, he says, uh, what exactly it means, dispassion, are you living into that state of dispassion? Are you, do you really 
understand what is real self. Are you holding your mind on the real self? That's why I gave that example. So this is one example of a snake and the rope. If rope is not there, we do not see snake also. Do you see that? But the snake does not exist. Problem is that the snake does not exist. But we take, our mind takes because of impurity that the snake exists. So the entire journey, all the principles and the concepts are, are meant to remove that snake. What is left? Rope. Huh? Rope, you can say that it is the real self. When we are seeker, the pure and the focused mind discovers that there is one reality behind the world of name and the form. Now, in our country, we use a lot of, we, if we find platinum, huh? is the costliest uh, element. So we find the platinum behind the nose pain, earring, necklace, bracelet. Just see that. The different names and the forms exist in name, just for the sake of name. Actually, it is platinum. One element. So just contemplate and think that it is only one element that exists. That element is our real self and it happens only when we are a seeker when we are a seeker and who is a seeker when there is a dispassion and discernment when there is a dispassion and discernment when you start thinking you know whatever the goal you have in your mind if you don't think about that goal where you want to go I want to go to Walmart. So Walmart is the goal, fixed. Same thing, what I want to find out, real self. Otherwise, this beard guy will speak and speak and speak and you stop thinking. Oh, it doesn't work. I have a lot of things to do. I have seen a lot of people. Oh, I have a lot of things to do. You know, I will leave 15 minutes earlier. Leave it. We are okay. But it tells you something about mind. So, let us go to this next uh, sutra, that is a wonderful verse, and that's a wonderful verse, what it says, uh, fourth one. Yathana tu yatu bhinna, or we can say bhinna staranga fena budbuda, atmano natata bhinna, Vishwamatman Vinirgatam. So now, simple, if I translate into simple, so here he translates as waves, foam, and bubbles are not different from water. So the universe emanating from the self is not different from it. How can you separate snake if there is no rope? But how to reach to that state? Only through the mind. What is the mind? Mind is the inner instrument. So when it is pure, undisturbed, then we can remove the veil of ignorance. How? By knowledge. When? Here and now. The real self is present here and now. So our meditation is with eyes open. But why it does not happen? God bless you. Three times because you did three times. So, so, <laughs> so you see, the three defects of the mind is there. What are the three defects that prevents us uh, awakening to meditation? One is the impurity. It is known as mala. Second is the vikshepa. It is known as uh, you can say distraction. Third is ignorance. Huh? In uh, descending order. Impurity, vikshepa, huh? and avaran. Impurity means mala in Sanskrit. So what exactly is this mala? 
or impurity. You know, so normally in philosophical sense, we say desire, anger, greed, and uh, pride, jealousy, and a strong identification with the body. But that does not make a sense. But yes, you, when you want to be a seeker, then we discuss in detail. Now, make a sense that what exactly it means by impurity. Impurity simply means when the mind is interested in something other than the real self. While listening to me, just check your mind. Where your mind is, is mind more interested in something other than the real self? And if the mind is more interested in something other than the real self, finished. What will happen? Then the mind will continue to run after that object, that person. That is why I gave the parable in the beginning. What I should do. So the, what is the remedy? What is the solution? So the master says the solution is nitya and the nimitya karma. What does it mean? That I am doing my duty with a joy in day-to-day -day life but keeping the mind on the real self. Got it? So impurities is gone. First is the impurity is gone. Now comes the second, uh, why the master is saying discernment and dispassion both are required. These two qualities must be practiced every day at every moment in life to be in the state of meditation here and now. Here and now, with eyes open. So the first is the impurity. Uh, so understand what is the impurity? I'm talking to you and if the mind is thinking of something else, gone. Second is Vikshepa. It means the distraction. What exactly uh, means distraction? You are, in a, you are doing meditation and the mind starts thinking of something else during the practice of meditation. You know, mind is distracted. You wake up in the morning, oh, let me take a shower. No, no, I think it's better to take a cup of tea. No, 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 no. Let me lie down and relax again. Check, check that state of the mind. Check those movements of the mind. Once you have these movements, they are known as distraction. It cannot make you a seeker. So when you discern and you enter, your mind enters into the state of dispassion, then this problem can be solved. Two things, impurities. Mind is thinking of something other than the real self. First, impurity. And now I choose to think over or meditate at that time some other thought disturb me. So that is what the distraction is. I think these two things are clear. When you correct these two problems, impurity and distractions are gone by regular practice. Then we become a seeker. Seeker. Then the third is there. At that moment, in that state of the mind, Mind is ready, then we are ready to remove the ignorance. What is that ignorance? Ignorance, oh, there is only earring. Don't you see that? But I see the platinum. Don't you see the nose ring? No, I see the platinum. These different labels are for the sake of labels. But deeper inside, essentially it is platinum, it is gold. This is what the Master says. Yatha na toyato bhinnahas bhinnah tarangaha fein budbuda atmano what he says atmano natatha bhinnah 
Vishwamatman Vinirgatam. What he says, just as we foam and the bubbles are not different from water. They are not different from the water. So all this which has emanating from the real self is no other than oneself. Means what? I am becoming Kate, I am becoming Anne, I am becoming Jerry, David, I am becoming everything. Outside this is just, who is that I? That I is the real self. So the real self is a common element. It is only one, but it appears different because of the name and the form. Look at the beauty. Look at real self is not different from the word in appearance. It's a new level of awareness that we, once we are there, we always live into that state of meditation. Now I am pure consciousness. Now I see the universe is not different from the consciousness. So then, you know, here only, here only in, in Arizona, I was explaining this, but when your mind is not pure, Oh, say, so it means uh, when I see my wives, you see the distortion of these principles. I see my honey, so it means that all women are my honey. You see the distortion. Because when the mind is not pure, then we cannot enter into these principles. Go a little deeper, Yatha, where he says, Yatha natto yato bhinna staranga. What is creation? It is an extension of the name and the form. The moment there is a name and form, there is the world and the universe. And where it is seen? It is seen in the real self, like the different waves, foams, flood, storm, all are seen in the same water. Every name in the form has a beginning and end. And what we are searching? We are searching the real self that never has a beginning, never has an end. So this master says real self is one and all pervading but appears as many as the gold appears as many as the water appears as many as the platinum appears as many. Can I see it? Seeing that, am I aware of this fact? And the mind, we are caught by the ignorance what is that ignorance? <coughs> I am happy today because of you. Tomorrow I am unhappy because of you. But you appear as a name in the form. You appear as a name in the form. See that. This is what the Master is saying. What is saying? Again, see, look into that. So what we do, you sit and contemplate, sit and contemplate. With eyes open, where I see the wall, hmm, the tube light, the monitor, the screen, and you, you as a name and the form. So I see the body, body, monitor, huh? <coughs> clock, my master's picture, and everything. Now, can I see it is all matter? It is all matter, including this body. Carbohydrate is matter, protein is matter, fat is matter. Can I see that? Can I see the reality behind the names and the forms? Another way to pick up and understand, go and find out the ultimate cause, logically, rationally, step by step. You look beautiful. Who looks beautiful? Body. What is this body? Is body you? But for the sake of 
convenience in the world we should use. But at the same time, we should remain aware of that the ultimate cause is the matter. Same way, we perform all our duties in day-to-day -day life, but like the maid whose mind always lives with her own family, even while working for the master, working for the owner. Are you getting it? So simple. But we have to need to contemplate need to contemplate. I'm with my honey. Let me perform my duty and finish it. So I eh, I become uh, honey before the honey. I become the father before the son. And then I do my duty and it is done. So here, one thing that is very important to understand what the master is saying, normally we say the blueness of the sky. So we have separated. In the beginning, the journey is to separate. Sky is blue? No. Blueness is not there. Sky is not blue. So snake is there in the rope? No. But now, what is the message here? by this example, that there is a real self, that is the state of being, which is becoming by different names in the forms. Are you getting it? The water is one, it is becoming wave in its name in the form, but essentially it is a water, it is becoming foam, essentially it is a water, it is becoming a flood, essentially it is water. Can I hold on my mind to that essential nature? And that essential nature is me. That is the goal of meditation. Let us see that. So as the waves in the foams are... emanating from the water, so the entire universe of name in the form emanating from the real self. So is it emanating from me? You have a doubt? I know myself. Is it clear? I know you. Is it clear? So who is this I? I know myself, I know everyone here, I know the world. Who is this I? It is consciousness. Okay, remove that consciousness. Can I ever recognize you? So it is that I is appearing as name in the form, as David and Jerry and Kate and so It is only one reality. That is the message Master is giving. Let us start our journey of meditation. Close your eyes. So in this journey of meditation, we are actually doing nothing. In that state of the pure mind, we want to see that reality. Uh, but as usual, eyes are closed and become aware of the body. So you are aware of the body from the top of the head to the toes. Aware of the body. What is the knowledge that you have? This body is an appearance. Body is not me. So what is not me? It all appearance. But you also experience mind is looking deep inside. You see, I explained you what is the impure mind. The mind is looking something other than the real self. But if the mind naturally moving inside, looking inside the forehead in the space, 
you will find that you need not to work on the body. Why? The mind is not there. If the mind is there on the body, the mind, that mind, first it, it is on the body, and from the body then it enters into the world. So it means I am seeking something other than myself. It's not a big deal. Oh, it's not a complex, you know, problem, mathematical problem to solve. Just you move in that field of awareness. That's all. Done. So now see that, look at the neck joint. So you are simply aware, neck joint is the name and the form and the matter. It is inert. It cannot see itself. It cannot see others. So it is the eye that is seeing. You know, that awareness leads to feeling of sensation, comfortable and steadiness. And what is after that? After that, there is only a space. How simple. That is what I am saying. So even on Mondays and Thursdays, we are going through a very process and a method. We, our focus is on the method. Here our focus remains on the real self. That's the biggest difference between the meditation uh, on Saturdays and meditation on. So looking at the sho shoulder joints, being there, you know, being there means that real eye is there. So now you go out again to the shoulder joints, you feel the sensation, comfortable, steadiness, you return again, the mind goes inside naturally, it is not distracted, it is not impure. In that state you experience, you are already there. So when you are already there, you still enjoy continuing if I say so, with the different steps. But in order to settle into that, uh, it is always good. Uh, we say we have to contemplate, reflect, and regularly practice. So look at the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. Are you looking at the body, no doubt, as a name in the form, but are you looking at the matter? Yes, matter is inert. It cannot see, body cannot see itself. It cannot see others. So who sees? I. What is this I? Awareness. See that? So we are trapped by the mind in the experiences. What we are looking? We are looking for an experiencer. Real self has to be a subject, has to be a knower. So in every experience, I'm looking for an experiencer. So when the mind is pure, uh, did I explain you clearly what is the meaning of purity? The mind keeps looking and searching the real self deeper inside. During that period, the mind moves outside because of the distraction and impurity based on our past impressions. No worries. We simply watch them. That is what is being carefree. Being carefree. Thoughts are coming? Thank you. No thoughts are there? Thank you. I feel some sensation in the body? Thank you. No sensation? Thank you. Why? I go behind the mind. 
one explanation, one understanding, other explanation. I am an experiencer. I'm a conscious entity. So when you are aware, you are a conscious entity behind all the thoughts that are coming and going. But again, what happens? It's a part of the impurity. My mind intellectually confirms I know everything and still you are suffering. So what happens? The pride comes. That is why we need to practice. To merge. Awareness of the body and then the awareness that I am not the body. Why? Body is a different shade name in the form of the same matter which takes birth, grows and dies. But I am not the body. Look at the breath. So when I say look at the breath, the mind says it's a breath is a movement. No worries. Okay. Let my mind follow the breath going in and out. No worries. Oh, one day what will happen? Your mind will say, what do you mean by going in and out? When I'm not the body, how it can go inside me and come out of me? See that. That is actually the, the goal of the breath mindfulness. Oh, you say focus on the breath and you are in mindful. No, no. That gives you relaxation. But the goal is when I'm not the body, I'm 100% clear. And now the breath is going in and breath is, you stop. No, it's not going in and it's not coming out. You find it's purely a horizontal movement or the vertical movement of the breath. You see, that is why. Even in English language, we have a right word. Inspiration means to live. Who lives? Body. Expiration. Body is gone. Look at the word. Here, looking at the, looking at the breath. Then I, only I can say, removing the ignorant part that the breath is going in and out is ignorant part. So I see, I see the movement of the breath. And the moment you see that movement, by removing the ignorance, it is neither going in and coming out. You are already into the infinite space. My friend, when you see the gold in the earring, in the nose pain, in the necklace, in the bra bracelet, what happens? The name and the form, height and the weight, length and the weight, everything disappears. It's pure gold. See that? We need to contemplate and reflect. You may say it is a contemplative meditation. Passive, contemplative, reflective.
You're dear with the breath of weirdness. Now, awareness of the changing and unchanging. There is one thing that is not changing at all in us. And the moment you have any experience coming from outside the world, from the body in terms of the sensation, tingling, or coming from the breath, or the feeling, or the thoughts, they all are changing. But there is one that is not changing. Just feel and imagine the water unchanging. Wave, foam, flood, storm, all are changing. So when there is a change you experience. But here, experiencer is experiencing. You are aware of the both. If I say so. Even it's a wrong statement in meditation, but for the sake of understanding, Experiencer is experiencing all the changes that is taking place. It is aware of those changes. What happens to the water? The wave rises and merges. There is the life and the death. There is the lifespan. Birth, growth and the death. Foam, bubbles. The mind is reflecting on the experiencer and experiencer is one never changing reality and whatever are my experiences are constantly changing no experience can remain forever I'm taking a liberty be to, to be more intense based on the teachings of this master. I live. I live into that state. We are aware of the world outside. Awareness is what? That is my experience. So whose experience? That is unchanging. The experiencer. That is me. So what happens when the mind is impure? That experiencer is lost and the false experiencer returns. How? Now this is my house. Okay. Means water says this is my wave. 
Come on. Come on. And that happens very deeply. Look at the body. My body. No doubt. But I am the body? Craziness. Why I am the body? Because I do something. I'm interested in something in the world, then the real self. Then only I label, I am the body. Can I live into that state of experience, sir? And the experience of the body, no problem. No issue if I experience the body. But here, the catch is, awareness is, I am not the body deeper inside. I am not the wave. I remain water. See that. Uh, that is, you know, we have to. This is what uh, J. Krishnamurti says, extraordinary awareness in which we are aware. The experiencer, the knower alone exists. The rest are manifestations. But we mix the two. When you mix the two, you are... So what I was explaining before this step, that the physical mind and then the subtle mind, you look at the breath now. So I used to say it is the subtle mind. No! Behind the subtle mind, it is the experiencer. Who is experiencing the breath? And what is the operating principle for reflection? Whatever is changing is not me, can never be me. Why? I exist in all the experiences. Millions of experiences have gone. Millions are rising and waiting to go. But that experiencer, that I, is still there, present, ever present. Oh, look at this, amazing. Amazing. When I say awareness of the breath, that awareness is the experiencer, knower. And the breath is different. Every breath is changing. What is changing is not me. In the beginning, we have to apply these operating principles and the time comes, it becomes so natural to us. Natural to us, yes. And uh, I used to say, I'm reminding you, let us go deeper. Subtler mind is looking at the thoughts, feeling, images, all our experiences. So now what I'm saying? These thought coming and going, staying are all the changes. Whatever is changes, changing is not me. But who is knowing? Who is experiencing these changes? Who is experiencing? How do I experience? Can I experience without consciousness? Do I experience deep sleep? I'm unconscious. So, means consciousness is there. 
And what is the second element? Knowledge. <clears throat> Can we say knowledge plus consciousness is an experiencer? Yes. Because it knows the thoughts, feeling, ideas, imagination are coming and going. Look at it. Fact. Truth. No cult, no dogma, no belief, no religion, no God. Our master in this text is saying that you don't need to practice. It doesn't mean that you should not practice. When you are already into that state, you need not to do anything. You are at your home. What you need to do? No, no, I am going to my home. So if you live into that awareness, obviously you need not to do anything. But as long as... We are not there. We have to continue the journey. Okay, then uh, I used to say in these sessions, go deeper. So the subtlest mind, I used to say, and what the subtlest mind sees, what changes? No, no, no changes. It's emptiness. Behind the thoughts, feelings, senses, and images, I see only the sense of emptiness. Okay. Let me continue to see that emptiness. But who is seeing? I. Knowledge and consciousness. Experiencer. So that experiencer perceives a sense of emptiness and the silence, which is present all the time. Present all the time? I don't see it, because the mind is involved and engaged in the world of the name and the form. When the mind forces me to accept this is wave, this is bubble and this is form, I forget that water. Forgetting that water is ignorance. We have to remove the veil of ignorance and that is revealed in the state of emptiness of the mind. Another example, fan have five blades and it is moving at a high speed. And I ask you, how many blades it has? Stop it first, then I will tell you. So it stops, you recognize. Ah, so the mind goes behind it. And now I again turn the fan on. You say, okay. How many? A five. See that. So by many parables and operating principles, once we reach there, do we need anything more? No, we don't need to do anything. That is the beauty. Yatha natu yatu bhinna staranga Fena budbudaha Atmanu natatha bhinnam 
విశ్వమాత్మనం ఆ విశ్వమాత్మన వినిర్గతం ఐ ఎం ద నోవర్ ద వేవ్స్ ద ఫోమ్ ఇన్ ద బబుల్స్ ఆర్ నాట్ డిఫరెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద వాటర్ all this is emanating from the water i am the knower that is emanating the different names in the forms or in the world outside essentially it is me it is real self it is pure consciousness it is knowledge naturalness shanti 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 bring your mind on the right hand your mind on the left hand lift your both the palms place it on your eyes open the eyes inside know your experience as bring the hands down how are you david and jerry um yeah it's very very good uh i really enjoyed the message or the theme of today's session um and by the end it was a very very peaceful very quiet mind very um, quiet my limbs are still all asleep <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful how are you jerry i'm doing well sir it's very nice to be back and um it was quiet it was dark um i 
focused on all of your words and at the end had some white light in the uh, third the forehead area and that's it that's deeper yeah that's deeper you see how natural it is but to be there in the state of being natural are sunita apni shakal bhi dikhao how are you came how are you kate ah ye achhi lag rahi hai ah great empty open yes but uh, you but we have to live into that state 24 by 7 Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That is what it is. The challenge posed by our master. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. How are you, Anne? Yeah, I feel very good. I feel in a much safer place than at the beginning. <laughs> Let it be. So I. I feel better and hope I'll stay this way. Maybe. Yes, 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 yes. You are always safe here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How are you, Terry? Terry is good. Terry is Terry is doing very good. No issue, no issue. We will wait for you, Terry. Ah, Sunita, kya hal hai? Kya hua? Kuch hua sa? Kuch hua, Shant? Yeah. Ah, karte ro. Ab itne dinon ke baad aaye ho, ek din bhi nahi chhodna. How are you, Terry? I'm good. I, I couldn't get the unmute. It kept bouncing up and down, and I couldn't get it to hold still long enough to click on it. Think of it: if the I mind think... is muted this way, you are done. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I was just following the lesson the whole time. Right? Yeah. I was going between all the different body, mind, you know, self, mind, you know, and. Um, It was good. I just need to do more of it. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of thought because my I was always conscious of my breath the whole time because my body struggled with the pulling in of the breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I started thinking about the water and the breath and and thinking. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is moving? I it just came to me that question. When you live into that awareness, you know, just imagine I am the water that never changes, but different names and the forms and the waves. This is what the body, sense organ, mind, thoughts, feeling, images are there. We are there. Wonderful. How are you, Webha? It was not really great. It was like that. There is one freeness is there, but whatever thing that my mind says that I am this or I have to act like this in this case, it's all like I'm thinking like that, and it's all dropped. And then there's just free, uh, freeness in this at that time. Hmm. Yeah, that's another good explanation. A sense of freedom prevails in our life. and that is what we are seeking we get a permanent security in spite of hustle and bustle and the challenges in everyday life how are you ashok namaskar namaskar all all, uh, all good nothing to mention at the moment yeah good 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 and how are you shobha Feeling light. Feeling light. 
good. Good. So, Sunita, welcome back. I think we are meeting after many, many years. Many years. Yes. Many, many years. When you have all black hairs. <laughs> you see, when we are talking like this, see that I give an example. These are the changes. The mind is caught in the changes. It forgets that there is one thing that never changes. Do you see that? Oh, you know, black hair, white hair. What it means? Means nothing. For the sake of communication. Just so you see that? For the sake of communication. Huh? It means nothing at all. Now you have tall body. I have long beard. Doesn't not mean anything at all. But it means everything when I do not know who am I. The entire goal of this journey, Eastern wisdom, is the self-discovery. To know my real self is the final goal. Do you have any questions?